previously I expounded on the ideas of pharmacokinetics, wherein I went through the overview first, explained that there were four pharmacokinetic processes, including absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, discussed pharmacokinetic plots and what we can derive from them, as well as gave a general idea of how ionization will affect our drug molecules in all parts of the pharmacokinetic processes. So in this one, I needed to expound a little more on absorption because there are some considerations that we have to look at. And sometimes it would even depend on the drug that we are talking about, okay? So it would do us well to remember that we can define absorption as the travel of drug molecules from any site of administration into the bloodstream, okay? Or sometimes we can call it the systemic circulation, knowing that the blood will eventually circulate throughout our body, through our blood vessels. The site of administration, we should remember, would really depend on the route. So usually since the route taken is oral, so this is the GI tract. You can imagine that this is our stomach or our intestines. Of course, it may differ. So if I have a, a, a drug product that is injected through the muscles, then the site of administration would be the muscles. But regardless, it would always find its way to the blood. Well, that is if the drug molecules are to go through the entire pharmacokinetic processes and actually do beneficial effects on the patient's body. Okay. So what's in it for this slide? Well, I have here a law that will govern the process of diffusion, which is basically the passive process of molecules just going through the barriers that separate our blood from different organs, including the sites of administration, and then expound also on whether or not a weak acid or weak base would be absorbed and where would it be absorbed. So first, let me go to this so-called fixed law of diffusion. So normally in undergraduate, at least from where I come from, we don't really compute for the so-called flux or the rate of diffusion or how fast molecules go from the site of administration to the blood. But it's really just a way for us to notice what factors or expound on what factors can affect how slow or fast a certain drug can enter our bloodstream. So it is said that the flux is equal to D times A times K times the difference between CS and C all over H. And of course, these are the meanings of those letters. The D stands for the diffusion coefficient of a certain drug molecule. So again, um, it's not computed, okay? But the diffusion coefficient is an almost constant um, value for every drug molecule, which would depend on multiple factors, including its mass and temperature. So it's a little more uh, uh, going to physics already. So we will just assume that this is something that's a given. A is the surface area of the membrane. And if it's the membrane, I'm talking about this one. Usually, uh, 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 separating the site of administration in the blood. So for example, if the most common site of administration is the GA tract, we can say that A here would refer to how wide or how large the membrane of the stomach or the, 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 the intestines are. Of course, the larger the membrane, the larger the surface area, the more area for the drugs, the more places for the drug molecules to go in, then we could assume that it would be faster, the absorption rate that is. K stands for the lipid water partition coefficient, or if you have a background already in your other pharmaceutical sciences, the partition coefficient. You should remember that the higher the partition coefficient, then usually the higher its lipophilicity. And going back on our overview of pharmacokinetics and ionization, the more lipophilic something is, the more likely it is to be absorbed. Because again, if you have no charge, then your molecules can just go through barriers, no problem. Okay, nonpolar, nonpolar, like dissolves like. Or in this case, like will go through like. Okay. Similarly, if your drug molecules are way too ionized, like positively charged or negatively charged, 
they have almost zero chance of passing through this barrier, almost zero chance of absorption, unless they are very, very small. Okay. Then we have the concentration gradient, which is basically the difference of the drug in the blood and the uh, drug in the site of administration. Okay. And the H here is the membrane thickness, meaning if I have a thick membrane here, as you can see, it's in the denominator, it means inversely proportional. The thicker the barrier is, then it doesn't actually take a lot of explaining to imagine. What do you think would happen if molecules will have to go through a thicker barricade? Of course, it, they would have a harder time passing through. And of course, the thicker the membrane, that means that the progress of absorption, the rate of absorption, the flux, how fast the diffusion will happen, would be lower, okay? It would slow down, right? And so we can again say that the flux is directly proportional to the diffusion coefficient, which is almost always a constant. The surface area of your membrane on, dependent on what, what, what your SOA is and the partition coefficient of the drug molecule, as well as the concentration gradient, which we always assume is high because at the starting point of any absorption process, you have a lot of drug molecules on the outside and then a few drug molecules on the inside. Okay. Now, what else is there for us to think about in terms of concepts for absorption? Well, in one video, we already discussed that absorption would be directly proportional to how nonpolar something is. But we also should have learned that being nonpolar is not something that is very easy to understand. And it would even depend on whether the drug is more of a weak base or a weak acid, okay? And so here, we ought to clarify a little bit on that. I needed to have two examples. One is a weak acid in the form of aspirin, and one is a weak base in the form of amphetamine. In fact, I put their pKa values just to emphasize that aspirin having a low pKa is weakly acidic, and amphetamine having a high pKa is a weak. Base. I even color coded it red for acid, blue for base. Now, how do we use this table? First, if we have aspirin molecules in the stomach, which is an acidic pH or a low pH, that means that we have a weak acid in an acidic solution. That means that most of our molecules in the stomach would be in the neutral state or an ionized form. There will, of course, be very, very few. Uh, species or molecules that are in the ionized state, okay? But again, they will be overwhelmed by the unionized versions in the stomach. That's why you can see here, the arrow here is thicker um, on the unionized side because that implies that there's much, much more of this and much, much less of this. Now, remember that the gastrointestinal tract is a continuous route. So from the stomach, all of these molecules, whether they have a charge uh, they have a charge or not, will be flushed straight to the intestine. But now, notice that since the intestine has a higher pH, the ionization will change. In this case, since the pH is higher already, then we can assume that our weak acid would have more of a charge, a negative one that is. So there will now be more ionized in the intestine and um, less of the unionized aspirin molecules there. Now, we remember, what again is the form that is required for absorption? Of course, the answer is an ionized. So between the stomach and the intestine, which has more unionized aspirin molecules in the stomach, right? So that will tell us that when we take weakly acidic drugs like aspirin, the absorption will happen primarily in the stomach, okay? Whereas for, for even more cases, okay, we take actually much more weak bases in real life than weak acids, the opposite would be true. Because for example, in the stomach, in an acidic environment, most of our weak bases will be ionized. So there will be more of the ionized uh, positive versions of amphetamine. In this case, there will be less unionized. So you can also see the arrow being more towards here. And then they would all go to the intestine just like a while ago. But in the intestine, there will now be more of the unionized 
stay. Even if you look at the stable, right? High pH, like in the intestine, um, there would be more of this, okay? An ionized form, then less of the ionized here. And since more unionized in the intestine uh, is true for amphetamine, we can say that amphetamine and most other weak basic, uh, weakly basic drugs are absorbed more in our intestines. Okay, so that actually suggests to us that we need to be aware whether our drugs are weak acids or bases because the way they are absorbed will also slightly differ. 